Dali 3 is gone and what's replaced it is actually 10 times better. OpenAI has now launched its new image generation system right inside of ChatGPT. And I've been testing it to see how well it can actually perform. Now, if you've ever used Dali or even any other image generator, you know, well, they were so frustrating. They contained weird artifacts, had inconsistent results, and you had to prompt it like a wizard to get anything half decent. Now, this new tool doesn't just fix all of that. It kind of finally feels like ChatGPT is listening and producing what we're actually asking for. And the results is way more human, way more useful, and honestly, kind of scary. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how this new image model works, what it's good for, and some of its current limitations. I'm also gonna share over 10 use cases for your online business from mock-ups to whiteboard designs, to infographics, to social media posts. All right, let's dive right in. All right, so just wanna start on the release notes, dive into some of the possibilities with the new model, and then also look at some of the limitations. And then I wanna show you some real use cases with some of the prompts that I've given it, and then obviously how you could use it in your online business as well. So the first example is incredible. This whiteboard session is just amazing because when you first look at it, you might be like, well, this is just a, an image, but it's not, it's AI generated. And the massive advancement with this is the text because the previous models like DALI 3 and other image generation models really struggled to render text. And now you can see with this, like in the past, this just looked like gibberish or it looked like to me like Greek symbols. But now this text is, is amazing. Like they've asked for it, natural handwriting, a little bit messy. And we can obviously see the photographer's reflection, which is exactly what it is. So the advancement here is huge. And this just gives us, opens up the doors for so much possibility using this model now. Like we can use it for so many different ways in our online business. And again, they prompted it again directly in the chat and obviously it changed the, the style of the image. And now they've got kind of the two of them in this image. So this is amazing. It's great to see that now we can obviously render text properly. Again, another example is rendering text here with line one, line two, line three. And one of the biggest things is it now really listens to the prompt uh, and it actually does what you tell it to do. Whereas in the past, it just went off and did its own thing. Another example, comic strip. So again, uh, text in this, but obviously created a pretty cool comic strip and then a science experiment as well. So it's taken an overall kind of um, experiment here and an image and then kind of rendered this onto a book as a point of view in Washington Square and then created this kind of image, which looks like something from uh, a character from Lord of the Rings. Like I said, the, the biggest advancement really is text rendering. Like we can see here, street signs now look legit. Um, menus, you can obviously create menus, invitations you can create. And then obviously multi-turn generation is pretty cool. So again, now the model actually learns from the original image and doesn't change it when you prompt it for the next image. So here you can see the original image and then give this cat a detective and hat and monocle and it's kept the elements. We can see kind of the, the colors and the tone and the kind of style of the cat. In the past, it will have changed this, but now it's keeping it, but just added those elements. And then said, turn this into a AAA video game and it's obviously kept those elements, but added kind of a video game feel and then obviously took it one step further. So that's pretty cool to see. Obviously then we've got kind of uh, the objects thing. So in the past it struggled to handle like five to eight objects. Now the 4.0 can handle up to 10 to 20 objects, which is pretty cool. And then we've got kind of examples of like an empty city, wine glass, empty wine glass, visible elephant and maths equation as well. Again, in context learning, so it can analyze and learn from user uploaded images, seamlessly integrating details into its context to inform image generation. So like here we could see um, we've uploaded this um, all these different elements. And then obviously you can put now put this into photo taken in New York City. So the model is just so much more smarter. Uh, and like I said, it can learn from elements that we give it as well. So we can see like obviously uploaded this image and then turn this, turn this scene into a photo shot in a DSLR. So again, it's just so much better um, and it's improving. And this just gives us, like I said, so many more ways of using it, which I'll show you shortly. All right, so let's dive into some of the limitations. So the first one, which comes up a lot, and you'll see this in some of my examples, is just the cropping. So um, it's not, oh yeah, there we go. It's the cropping. So you can see here it's cropped out the top um, and it's cropped the bottom as well. So it says it occasionally can crop longer images. It did it quite a lot to me. Um, so I may have to just prompt it a little bit different or just get a bit more specific with the sizes. Um, but yeah, cropping was a major issue. Hallucinations, again, like any AI, we've got to double check the facts and the information it's giving us. It will probably can give us 
uh, you know, different <laughs> different answers and make information up. So just be bear that in mind. Um, like I mentioned before about objects, when generating kind of more than 20 objects, it can start to make uh, or have problems. So uh, just be mindful of that. Precise graphing. So again, it might not get the graphing correctly. It also struggles struggles in different languages. So non-Latin languages struggles with that. And then editing precision. So like when you reprompt it and say, look, there's a spelling mistake there. Can you recorrect that? It sometimes can't handle that. And it just kind of does it over and over again and uh, does it kind of correct it for you, which can get a little bit frustrating. And then dense information, which I can kind of understand why. Like, uh, you know, the model does struggle when trying to render detailed information in a very small size. So something to note on that. But all in all, I'm super impressed with this. Now let's dive into some kind of real world examples of how I would be using this or how I'm good, I am using this, and then also how you could use it in your online business. All right, first one is social media graphics. So again, if you create anything on LinkedIn or Instagram or Facebook, you can obviously now create graphics with that just one prompt. So I literally just gave it this prompt. And again, to use it, you can just type create uh, or click the three dots and then click create image, or you could just forward slash and then obviously look for create image there. Uh, again, I just gave it a prompt and it gave me this. Like this would probably take a little bit more time in Canva to create, but you can now just create kind of nice, simple social media graphics if you're using these. Um, obviously you can post these across all your social media. Next, I tried to get it to create YouTube thumbnails. Um, again, uh, if you obviously have a YouTube channel, this can take time to create. It's not quite there yet. We can see the first issue with cropping here. And then I thought, well, let's see if I could replace it with me and add me into it. And it's quite funny. So I gave it an image of me here and this is kind of what it created. Um, again, issue with cropping and this doesn't really look like, like me um, unless that's what I look like. So yeah, not great at YouTube thumbnails yet. Hopefully it can get better and improve, but uh, not I won't be using it to create me exact YouTube thumbnails yet. Podcast covers. So podcast and episode covers. This was pretty cool. Like again, definitely could create these for you. Uh, I just gave it a prompt up here, gave it quite a bit of information and then asked it to kind of leave it a bit for my uh, logo or my kind of headshot. And it did that. So again, you could do this for episodes or you could do this for just your overall podcast. Pretty cool um, and dead easy to use. Ad creative. So I've run Facebook ads, Instagram ads, LinkedIn ads, and the biggest problem sometimes you'll face is, is generating enough creative. And this is where it can really help. Now that we can obviously uh, render text and we can give it different prompts, you can now create endless amounts of ad creative, whether that's in the e-com space, the lead gen space, you could now using the, the 4 image generator to create ad creative. So super useful, super helpful, and I'll definitely be using this uh, to run um, or generate creative for, for my ads and some of my clients. Number five, infographics. So we can now create infographics, whether this is for kind of a presentation or your courses or whether it's for kind of uh, videos. Again, now you can give it a prompt and you can create infographics. Again, just be mindful of that kind of cropping issue. And you might want to kind of run this from left to right or change certain things, but you can have that conversation directly with the model and tweak things and see if it can get kind of, or give you the output that you're looking for. Next, eBooks. So now we can design kind of eBook covers. I just told it to give me a cover and I really like this. So again, the AI automation playbook, and we could obviously, uh, obviously create other pages of this and again it might just be kind of give you a, a mock-up or if you actually wanted to use this you could download this potentially ask it to create it into a pdf and potentially create like full ebooks using ChatGPT. number seven so we've got whiteboard style explainer graphics so here now we can create kind of like graphics like this so this is ai powered sales funnel for coaches we've got traffic lead nurture nurture sales call client onboarding again slight issue with cropping i think we'd need to get better at prompting this uh, in terms of sizes and just make sure that it kind of gets all the content on there diagrams so again three pillars of ai powered growth we can see here we can create different diagrams and this will just save you overall time especially if you're doing like say a webinar or you're doing a challenge or something like that and you want to include these types of uh, diagrams just to make things a little bit more interesting. Sometimes when you speak all the time, uh, you, you might want to obviously add these diagrams in to kind of showcase or help explain what you're trying to talk about. 
Mockups. Now this is huge. Like I use mockups a lot, especially on landing pages, on um, courses and things like that. Now you can create mockups inside of here. And this is huge. Whether you're in e-com and you're looking to kind of, you can take products, upload images and get them mocked up. Like if it's clothing or shoes, you can mock them up on uh, people, which is pretty cool. But I also use a lot of like laptop mockups and show different screens. So again, we can create mockups. Visual elements, so again, if you have a course or a community and you wanted to create like milestone posts or like goal posts, again, you could create kind of visual motivational feedback. You could add um, like specific names on here and things like that. Number 11, landing page design. So this one's pretty cool. I like this, like you can obviously give it a um, prompt to obviously build you out a landing page design. So if you're looking to create kind of a lead magnet landing page or a challenge funnel or something like that, use ChatGPT, get it to help you kind of craft out the design, the layout, ask it questions about, can you analyze like where the call to action should go? Like what should be above the fold? All the things that you want to you know use to make a great landing page, we could mop, like have it uh, map it out for us, give us the different sections, have that conversation with it. And obviously then look to build that out. So this one's pretty cool. Again, I added this one in, uh, not necessarily like, <laughs> like you don't necessarily need this for your online business, but again, I wanted to include it. So here I added a cartoon um, like me as an AI coach. And then I added a photo and I wanted to make me as like a, 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 a action man inside a packet. So again, you may want to do this for say some of your clients. So it might just be something fun to do in your community. Um, but yeah, this is just a, a little bonus one. And then final one is memes. So again, we can now generate memes using the ChatGPT 4.0 image generation. So this one's pretty cool. Gave it a prompt before automation. We've got calls, emails, work. And then after ChatGPT systems took over, we've got kind of a computer. Um, and then we've got kind of text and how many appointments he booked on there. So yeah, overall, those are some use cases. Again, I'm going to be testing this more and more and using this a lot more in my online business. Let me know how you could use it or how you are using it in the comments below. And yeah, looking forward to kind of seeing more updates on this, but definitely the huge advancement in terms of text rendering, which just makes it so much more easier to create visuals now. And if you thought this new image generation was impressive, Wait until you see what else ChatGB can do. I've put together 25 insanely useful hacks that I use to grow my own business from content creation to custom engagement. So if you want to get the most out of ChatGBT, make sure you check out this video linked up here next. I'll see you in the next video.